In this part, we are going to talk about functions. And all that functions are, are special commands in Python. We have actually seen one already, and that is print, which is printing a certain kind of text. This one you should be really familiar with at this point. But there are quite a few more. For example, len gives you the amount of characters in a word. And another one would be abs or absolute, which is giving you the absolute number which in practice just means if we have a negative one and we're using apps, this is turning into a one. Although to understand functions, we need one really important concept, and that is brackets. Meaning when we're adding brackets after the name of the function, we are calling it. And this we have done multiple times already. Anytime we use print, we have called a function by adding brackets afterwards. And inside of the brackets, we are adding what is called arguments. For example, for print, we can add any kind of argument. And this is then what we are going to print in the case of, well, print. And let's have a look at all of this in code. I want to once again start with print. And this is the name of the function. And to call it, I need brackets. And what we are adding in here is the argument which right now is the word, which uh, let's call it test. And what this function does is it prints the word so we can see it. Another function that we can use is called len. And in here, we could add another word. If I run the code now, we can't see any result because this is only giving us a value, but we are not doing anything with that value. And to overcome that, we have to print the result. And now if we run this, we are getting 12. And this 12 means that inside of this word, we have 12 characters. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Notice here that Python is counting a space as well. And all of this could also be used with variables. For example, this len, I could assign to the variable word length. And then on the next line, I want to print my word length and I get 12 again. And this would be a slightly cleaner way of doing this, although the previous one would also be perfectly fine. And another function we can also work with is absolute or abs. And in here, I can add negative 50. And for this, once again, I have to print the result Otherwise, we wouldn't see it. But now, if I run the code, we are getting 50, meaning ABS removes this negative 50. And there's one more really important thing that you can also do with functions, that right now, we always only added a single argument. But for some functions, you could add more than that. Print is actually one example of that. Let's put this on a separate line. So far, for print, I always added one argument. But what I can do, I can add a comma and then add another argument. And now I have two arguments. If I run the code, I get one argument and then print adds the other argument. And print accepts an unlimited number of other arguments, meaning if I run this now, we are getting more and more arguments. The important thing here is you always add one argument, then a comma, and then another argument, another comma, and so on, depending on what the function accepts. And some functions only accept a single argument. For example, absolute only takes one. If I added another, we would get an error, and that is abs takes exactly one argument, and we have given two. Python here is very clear apps only gets one argument. But that is essentially the basic concept of calling functions. Now for the exercise, I want you guys to do some research online. And I want you guys to look up the function called max and try to figure out what it does and call it inside of this code. Here I have Google open, although you could use any search engine. And to learn coding, you have to do a ton of research. So it's a really good idea to start early. And what we want to do right now is look at the Python function 
max. And let's just see what we get. In here, we can see a bunch of websites. And for Python, all of them are basically fine. W3 Schools, Program Is are really big ones. Geeks for Geeks is also really big. But the one you probably want to use the most is docs.python.org. This is the official Python documentation. If I click on this one, we can see all of the built-in functions for Python. And the one I'm looking for is called Max. If I click on this, I get a ton of information. The most important one is right in the beginning. It's returning the largest item in an iterable, or the largest of two or more arguments. What an iterable is, we have no idea so far. But what we do know is the largest of two or more arguments. So let's have a look at that one. Once again, we are in the code. And I want to use my max function. And in here, I want to just add a couple of random numbers. And now I once again have to print the result. And if I run this, I get 10. And well, we get 10 because max is selecting the largest argument that we are passing into it, which right now is 10. And well, that is basically all it does. If you understand this one, you also understand min, which is taking the lowest number, which in our case is 2. And with that, we have covered functions.